Today you are going to witness the one and only Ronnie and Donnie Gallion. Two people who must live as one. Two young men in their mid-twenties who have lived together every minute, every second of their lives. They have never been apart for even an instant because the Gallion brothers are Siamese twins. They are joined together by flesh and blood. Can you imagine being attached to somebody forever? Can you imagine when you wake up in the morning, you see the same person that you see when you go to sleep and you see this person right in front of your face every day for 68 years. Well, that is exactly what Ronnie and Donnie Gallion experienced every day of their lives. They were born in Dayton, Ohio on October 28, 1951. Uh, they were born to Wesley and Eileen Gallion. Now, when they were born, Eileen didn't know she was having twins. Back in those days, there was no such thing as ultrasound. They didn't invent or start using ultrasound until 1956. So in the olden days, when a woman had twins, it was a complete shock and surprise. Now, some women would say, it feels like there's four feet kicking me on the inside. And people would say like, ah, oh, you're crazy, or maybe your baby is really overactive. No, that woman was having twins. So you could only kind of guess the outright shock when Ronnie and Donnie uh, came into the world you got one foot coming out you got the other and then you got another and then you got an arm and then you got a head with another head and Ronnie and Donnie came out to the shock of Eileen Gallion so when these babies were born the hospital decided to keep them in the hospital for the first two years of their life they wanted to observe them and maybe see if they could possibly be separated. Now, when they were born, the doctors were telling the parents that uh, the babies were not going to live to see the following morning. And then the next day, they were still alive. And then it turned into they're not going to live to see next week, next month. And the baby started thriving. And... The first two years, like I said, they stayed right in that hospital. Now, when they were in the hospital, the doctors, back in the 1950s, they're looking at them and they're trying to see if they could be separated safely. Now, the doctors felt that the surgery could happen, except they weren't quite sure that both boys would survive. And after long and considerable thought about it, the parents decided that if both boys were not guaranteed to survive, then they were not going to have the surgery. So after they left the hospital, Ronnie and Donnie, they came home here to Dayton and the family tried to raise them as normally as possible. Now, looking at their bodies, uh, both boys, they're joined right at the sternum or the stomach area. And then it goes uh, down from them having their own sets of organs like hearts, uh, livers, kidneys, uh, livers, so forth and so on. But they share or shared one set of sexual organs and one rectum. So their body would go down kind of like it looks like maybe a v-shape and it would go down to a single urinary tract and of course a single colon now you try to raise your children the the best way you can and they try to enroll them in school and basically it turned from them you know trying to live a normal life to when they would wake up and go to school the teacher would tell them just go sit in the corner and you know keep away from us because the teacher and the principal in the school felt that they were such a distraction to the other students that uh, they weren't going to be able to learn so 
they were taken out of school and their parents tried to homeschool them to the best of their abilities but ultimately failing in that aspect because both boys would grow up to be men who were illiterate they couldn't read or write when they were about nine years old uh, the father wesley who for years had been uh uh, you know, people would stop by the house and ask them if they were interested in signing them up to be, you know, a part of like kind of like the freak show circuit, whatever you want to call it. And for years, both uh, Wesley and Eileen would say no, but they had nine kids. And I guess Wesley's uh, job wasn't paying the bills. So finally they relented and they hit the uh, carnival circuit. Uh, Ronnie and Donnie with their father Wesley would go on tour while the family stayed home. And that's how the family uh, was able to make a means uh, to, to you know feed themselves, clothe themselves, uh, pay their bills was because of Ronnie and Donnie. And they would travel all over the country and all over the world, uh, basically living their lives as a carnival exhibit so they lived in a trailer with three big uh panes of glass and well ronnie and donnie they didn't have any special skills they couldn't sing they couldn't dance they can't juggle they're not very funny really can't do much so the operators of whatever exhibit or show they were on they would just tell them look just do what you normally do so people would pay whatever amount of money and they would watch them either watch tv uh they would play checkers uh play with their toys uh and people would just kind of look at them as kind of like an odd oddity you know like a freak show thing you know what i mean and they did that for several years and then i guess we started getting uh i don't want to use the word the term politically correct but uh, the whole freak show, sideshow thing started becoming unpopular because people are starting to realize, like, this isn't right. Like, this isn't right. We're, we're paying, you know, two bucks to, to see these people and we're just kind of staring at them and we're being mean. And, you know, it's just not right. Now, listen, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm a capitalist at heart. Uh, I say this, uh, make money however, which way you can, as long as you're not hurting people. And these people, they're saying to themselves that this is, you know, this is wrong. Uh, we shouldn't be looking at them like this. But uh, on the other side of that coin, um, they're unable to work. Uh, they cannot find a job. It would be very difficult for them to be employed they don't have any skills so with that being said me personally i say make money whichever way you can as long as you're not breaking the law and you're not hurting anybody and uh, that's what they did uh for about 30 years they were on that circuit that they spent the last few years of their um working the carnivals uh, more doing so in Mexico and South America because that by that time as uh, we were coming into the uh, the late 50s early 60s so forth uh, Carnivals and that traveling sideshows started dwindling in attendance because now people are watching TV more they got color television and movies and People are finding other uh, ways to be entertained. So basically their last days were south of the border so in 1991 they both retire from uh, performing or whatever it is that you want to call it and they come back to Dayton and they had saved up some money to where they could buy their own home so they bought a little house in Dayton and they move in and they look at each other of course they're looking at each other every day and they're saying well who's gonna bring us food who's gonna wash our clothes who's gonna clean you see you got to understand these dudes had everything done for them. So they're almost 40 years old now, living on their own, but they don't know how to do anything. They never even washed their clothes in their life. They don't know how to cook. This is strange and foreign to them. So thankfully their younger brother, I think his name is Jim, 
uh, helped him out tremendously. I mean, basically, he was almost in a sense like the third twin because he would uh, watch out for them. And it, it took some time to get them acclimated to caring for themselves. And so that happens. And, you know, you're 40 you know, years old and you, you kind of try to live as much as a normal life as possible. And as they started getting older, they started developing health problems. I believe they had a scoliosis and uh, started developing arthritis. And as you can see in the pictures, I mean, walking was very, very difficult for them. Uh, one of the twins uh, was kind of laying back in an, uh, in an odd angle. And I'm pretty sure when you're, you know, positioned like that, you're not going to be able to walk very far. As a matter of fact, um, they couldn't uh, towards um, as they were getting into their 50s. Uh, it would be very difficult for them uh, to just walk 150 feet up that, that I, they probably couldn't even do it. So they relied on a power wheelchair uh, to get by in areas where, you know, they had to do a little bit of walking and as they got older um to make a couple bucks here and there uh, they did some uh, documentaries uh they were on the jerry springer show that's how i first seen them i uh, seen them on jerry springer jerry jerry J yeah uh god rest that man's soul i will be in chicago to visit his grave uh sometime hopefully soon and uh, I'm not sure exactly what year it was, but uh, they officially became uh, the world's uh, oldest uh, conjoined twins. Of course, their careers uh, did not go off without a hitch. Uh, their father, Wesley, was actually arrested in uh, 1961 by the Sheriff's Department in San Bernardino, California, because when they were working, a lady that seen the twins fainted and the police were somehow involved and there was an old law uh, from California from the 1870s that stated that it was illegal to make money off of people and their deformities. So the father was arrested. Guess you gotta obey the law at all times, right? No matter how stupid they are. And even though they were joined together for all of their lives uh, they were quite different people so if you watch some interviews uh, you can easily tell them apart because Ronnie is more I mean they're both childlike uh, in in their thinking and the way they speak but uh, Ronnie was like chill like he's laid back uh, he loves to eat like can't eat enough and that would actually get the twins in trouble as they got older because they started developing a weight pro problem because they were constantly eating snacks. Their brother would try to like, you know, keep the snacks away from them and then they would get their neighbors or, or their friends to say, hey man, bring me some uh, candy or whatever, you know what I mean? And uh, so Ronnie was laid back. Uh, Donnie was more of the conservative one. He was more serious. Um, stern if you will if you watch some of the interviews uh of the twins and uh donnie wasn't an overeater like he was good but ronnie was like he'll clear out a buffet um both boys as they grew into uh men uh, of course you know they didn't have as i know any female relationships i mean it's going to be quite difficult when you know you have one sexual organ one set of sexual organs and you know all this and that you know what i mean not to get into that but you know i think you guys know what i'm talking about and so nobody ever thought that they would live as long as they did and they lived to be uh, 68 years of age uh, one of their lifelong dreams was to see their favorite NFL football team in person. And it was almost uh, not, uh, they were almost not able to do so just because of how difficult it was um, transporting them uh, and them getting around. But they were able to see the Dallas Cowboys play. And uh, even though they 
couldn't read, they would still get a newspaper every day and just kind of look at the pictures. And then looking at the pictures, they could figure out what the article said. And they would watch uh, the news. So they were pretty up to date on current events. And other than that, uh, two very remarkable boys that were basically attached together for all of their lives. Uh, quite a um, unusual and uh, remarkable story. And uh, this is the final resting place of Ronnie and Donnie Galleon. As you can see right there, it says world's oldest conjoined twins. So I'm, I'm sure some of you are probably wondering um, which one died first and how did they die? Well, they died of a, I believe it was congestive heart failure and they had their own heart. So they had, you know, two hearts. So I'm pretty sure not to get it scientific because who I don't know, I'm not a doctor. So I don't know if they died together or they died minutes apart. I'm not sure. I know another video that I did about Chang and Ang uh, Bunker. I know that one twin died and the other one was still alive for like some hours before he died. So I don't know if it was, uh, if this was the same scenario where one died and the other one was still alive, I don't know, but um, you know, I watched uh, an interview by them and uh, the interviewer had asked them, uh, it was kind of a stupid question. I mean, she said, hey, would you, do you guys wish you were apart? Well, you know, I thought it was stupid, but uh, they said no. They said that uh, the Lord made them that way. And if it was the Lord's will that he would separate them himself. And you know, they helped each other. They would shave each other, help bathe each other. I mean, listen, they did everything together and they didn't know anything else. So I could imagine, listen, let's, you know, let's talk about it. I can imagine that they would long for the company of an, of a, the, of a woman, somebody of the opposite sex. And I think after a while, I think you kind of just get used to your situation. So I don't think, you know, I think people might think that, uh, you know, they lived like some like kind of a torturous life. I, I don't feel that way. Cause again, I, they didn't know anything else. That's all they knew. And they're their own best friends and they would fight sometimes like, like brothers do, but it, the fight would not last long course you know <laughs> it's easy to get over a fight really quickly when you're attached to somebody and uh yeah they would always make up they were born together they lived together they died together ronnie and donny galleon okay rest in peace to both okay guys i'm out of here I will see you on the next video, well, at least I hope to anyways. Catch up with you later. Peace out.